everybody's got this race culture issue in this country, you know? Anywhere, you know, there's a big difference between race and culture. Because racially, I'm an Indian man. Culturally, not at all. <laughs> Many of you may think you're Indian or, you know, some people think they're Italian, but then they've never been to Italy in their life. They don't speak Italian. It's, it always bugs me out when they call black people in America African-Americans. You're not fucking African. <laughs> you're black. If a black guy showed up in Africa tomorrow, what's happening? You'd be like, that motherfucker's crazy. Get him away from me. That They'd be looking for a white guy. Oh my God, thank God you're here. <laughs> Those brothers over there are out their mind. <laughs> Same thing for me. You know, there's a big difference between race and culture. Because all my life, I've been identifying myself as an Indian man. I'm always like, I'm Indian. Yeah, what are you? I'm Indian. Yeah, where are you from? I'm Indian. What do you mean, where am I from? I'm Indian. <laughs> Then I realized something. I was born and raised in Canada. There's nothing Indian about me. The only thing Indian about me are my parents and my skin tone. That's it. Culturally, I'm not Indian at all. And the only reason I know this is because last year I went to India to do some shows. And I thought I was Indian. And when we were flying over to India, I had this overwhelming Indian feeling. Inside of me, I was like, I'm the most Indian man ever. I just thought I was so Indian, you know? We arrived in Bombay, I was like yelling at the flight attendant, open the doors to this plane! Let me have my Indian people! Let me show those Indians what it's like to be Indian! She opened the doors to that plane, I turned Canadian so fast. I was like, I am so... Did I step in shit just now? I... When you arrive in India, the minute they open the doors of that plane, you get an overwhelming blast of shit smell right up your nose. They have a... It's almost like they hire somebody to shit in front of every plane that lands. Quick, quick, here it comes on. Shit, shit, and go. Shit, and go. Go, go, go. And if you're an Indian person out there thinking to yourself, that's not true, that's not true then fuck you, you probably had a cold or landed in the wrong country. Because <laughs> racially, I'm an Indian man. Culturally, there's things that happen culturally. If you were not raised in that part of the world, you will find it unacceptable. Like in India, grown-ass men, grown-ass men, hold hands with other men. <laughs> and walk down the street. Like everything's okay. And they don't just hold hands, they're holding fucking pinkies. And swinging that shit. <laughs> and to them, there's nothing gay about it. Here's the thing. There's nothing gay to them. To them, I'm holding my friend's hand. What's gay about that? <laughs> See, you grow up over here. There is no acceptable time for two straight men to ever touch hands. <laughs> ever. You ever walk to the mall with one of your guy friends and your hand accidentally bumps? He's like, hey, what the fuck is wrong with you? But in India, grown-ass men holding like, and the guys holding pinkies. The best shit about it is they'll still try and mac on chicks. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hello, hello, <laughs> hello. How are you looking very lovely today? <laughs> Some guys act like thugs, holding hands. They'll be holding pinkies and eyeballing you. Like they're trying to start some shit. <laughs> I was at the beach in Bombay, right? I'm hanging out. This gang of like 17, sorry, 16. Well, 17's an odd number. That would mean one guy's like, somebody hold my hand, somebody hold my hand, right? So, <laughs> this, this gang of like 16 dudes is walking across the beach, holding pinkies and giving everybody dirty looks. with their dress pants and flip-flops. <laughs> How are you gonna start a fight holding another man's hand? 
How? 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 Let go. Let go. Let go. <laughs> it's a different world over there, man. And I was there doing shows. I remember before I went to India, I was all nervous, right? Because my friends were like, my friends were like, "Hey, Russell, man, when you go to India, are they going to understand your jokes?" And I was like, "I don't know. Are they?" And then and they're like, "Are you going to offend them?" I'm like, "I fuck, I don't know. Am I going to offend them?" Because I realized something before I went. A lot of my jokes, the punchline, is the Indian accent. <laughs> But it was funny because when I performed in India, everybody understood every single thing that came out of my mouth. Every joke, every line, every like suggestion, they were with me. Like they were with it. They were completely there. And it was funny because every time I did the Indian accent, they laughed harder. Because I think that they don't think that they have that accent. I think they think there's like one guy in India with this accent. Probably the same guy shitting in front of every plane. You know what I mean? Because they would come up to me on the streets. People would like in India walk up to me on the streets. First of all, I don't know how the hell they recognize me on the streets. I'm like, it's India. There's over a billion and a half people there. I look like every. I look at least like fucking 15 million people. But they come up to me on the street. They go, Rasal, Rasal. They were so emphatic with their compliments too. It was the best thing. Rasal, you are sure last night. You are sure, Rasal. You are sure last night. Too good. Too good. Too good, son. First class, A one. Fantastic. The show was fantastic. Russell, your show was mind blasting. Mind blasting. You mean mind blowing? No, no, no. Anything can blow your mind. This blasted my mind. It was 